We're gonna go over the best ways to jump higher, proven by science. And we're gonna start right now. So when we're thinking about jumping higher, why do people care? Why do we care about jumping higher? And it immediately, I think, has to be identified, you know, through the lens of like doing a broad jump or doing a vertical jump can show you how well you can transfer energy into vertical displacement or horizontal displacement. And that in turn is a consistent action that is seen through most sporting realms, okay? So if we break down and we like to look at the sporting world through five different sport depths, if you're a shot putter or an offensive lineman, you're gonna have horizontal and vertical displacement. You have to move forward rapidly. Same thing if, let's say you are a running back, same exact thing, or a sprinter, same exact thing. You've gotta be able to have vertical action and horizontal action at high speeds. Then you go into the realm of like combat sports, same thing, okay? Now you have a soccer player, lacrosse player, they're gonna have vertical action based off of running. And then we've even seen that jumping does have an actual correlation to running speed. Okay, then you even look at someone like a distance runner, let's say a marathoner, and we actually see a correlation between impulse ability, so their impulse capability to do a high vertical jump and their actual speed on the track. Okay, so we can look at it and say, all right, this is a pretty consistent test that transfers very well. Horizontal, vertical jumps, okay, transfers very well. So the next thing then is say, we can break these movements down and we can test a broad jump or we can test a vertical jump and we can know that if relative to other people in their sporting realm, this individual, this normal athlete has a high vertical jump, then we can see, all right, now, this person has a higher vertical jump than other people in their sport, so they're probably gonna have at least a little bit greater potential that we can then develop over a long period of time. Or we can say they have a weak vertical jump, a low vertical jump. We need to improve their impulse so that they can jump higher and become better at their sport, okay? The sporting coach still needs to do their gig, but we as strength and conditioning coaches can look at this now and compare it and say, okay, we gotta improve this benchmark test, all right? So now we can look at it and say, all right, well, what goes into a big jump? They have to have a rapid rate of force development. They have to have and achieve a high peak velocity when they're moving their body. Their body is the implement. They have to have high average velocity. If this happens, they will have a high vertical jump. These are the three components to impulse to the force being done in a short period of time. Okay, so that's that first big concept now. After we understand where the vertical jump or the broad jump is as a test relative to all sports, we have to understand what is at play in that sporting realm or what is at play to increase the vertical jump or to increase that broad jump. Okay, so now that that's done. So what science say? We're going to go into three specific studies and how we can apply this as strength and conditioning coaches so that everybody can be more successful with jumping. And I think that that's the one concept here is that it's fun to break down papers and, and research and to see how they understand and study this, but then we have to know how to apply it. All right. So if we look at comparing the effectiveness of a short-term vertical jump versus a weightlifting program on athletic power development, it's a mouthful from Teo and Michael Newton. Now, so if we're looking at this, okay, they're comparing the effectiveness of a short-term vertical jump versus weightlifting program on athletic power development. Okay, so this is a paper from October of 2016. So the purpose of this study, it's crazy that that was eight years ago, was to compare changes in center of mass, neuromuscular power, and performance of sports specific tasks after short term six week training adopting either weightlifting or vertical jump exercises. So essentially they go six weeks, let's see what happens. They're gonna weightlift or they're gonna do vertical jumps. Now, six weeks, pretty short, but it's something that we can use as a basis. Let's say we have uh, an athlete and they've got a peak in a very short time frame. We put a lot of weightlifting movements on them. We know the result of this paper is gonna happen or we put a lot of vertical jump exercises on them. We know the result of this is gonna happen. Okay, I'm actually thinking about Ty G Leach who just had a pro day with us. He trained with us for 72 straight days. And basically we had to drastically improve his vertical jump. So what did we do? We did a lot of two box power snatches. So 26 recreational active men were randomly allocated to either weightlifting or vertical jump program. This is pretty cool. They tested the counter movement jump, squat jump, and depth drop. Okay, 20 meter sprint and the 505 agility test. All of this was assessed pre-training, then six weeks, then they did it again. Despite the weightlifting group demonstrating larger increases in peak power output during the counter movement and the and squat jump, no significant between group differences were observed in any outcome measure. Okay, there was a significant main effect of time observed from the three vertical jump tests. So counter movement jump, squat jump, depth drop, zero to five meters and zero to 20 meters in sprint times and the 505 agility test time, which were all shown to improve after training. Okay, irrespective of the training approach adopted by coaches 
or athletes. Addition of either weightlifting or vertical jump training for development of power can improve performance in tasks associated with these specific athletes and sports. So what does that mean? Does it mean vertical jump exercises are worthless or weightlifting exercises are worthless? What it means is that if you've got six weeks, you've got to analyze the athlete, you've got to look at their past, as an athlete, did they use weightlifting movements? Have they not used weightlifting movements? Can they learn them pretty quickly? Do you have the ability to teach them quickly or do you suck as a coach? And can they even use vertical jump tests to try and improve? And basically, as a coach, either one's gonna work. Okay, either one's going to improve their jumping ability. Okay, so you as a coach have to identify how you compare their results, how you understand their past as an athlete, and how you were gonna make that decision to move forward. Now, the next one, training methods to improve vertical jump performance. This one's from 2013 from Gomez. The whole study aims to review the main methods used to improve vertical jump performance. Okay, so although many training routines have been proposed, there's always four main categories, plyometric training, weight training, whole body vibration training, which I don't really, I don't know, people I don't think really use it anymore. Electromyostimulation training as well. So plyometric training is known to enhance muscular force, the rate of force development. Those are keys. Plyometric training is key to impulse. Okay, muscular power, muscular contraction, velocity, cross-sectional area, muscle stiffness, allowing greater storage and release of elastic energy. So we know plyometrics are key here if you wanna jump high, right? Weightlifting can improve muscular force, velocity, power output, rate of force development during jumping on a force plate. It can also lead to muscular hypertrophy, which if we gain too much weight and we decrease our body weight to impulse ratio, we might not jump as high. So we've just gotta remember, that's another big factor. I think the ratio that we have to look at as strength and conditioning coaches is body weight to impulse ratio. And the impulse has to be measured through things like vertical jump, bounds, and cleans or snatches. That's what our entire system is based off of. One of the most effective methods to improve vertical jump is the combination of plyometric training with weight training, okay? Which takes advantage of the enhancement of maximal dynamic force and the positive effects of plyometric training on speed and force of muscular contraction. Okay, specific to the type two fibers. So some authors have found an increase in vertical jump with the use of VT, vibration training, while others did not see an effect. However, it remains unknown by the mechanisms. Okay, same thing with ET, electromyostimulation. So in summary, Gomez is saying, right here. Gomez is saying, scientific evidence suggests that the best way to improve vertical jump performance is through the combination of plyometric training and weight training. So what I think that looks like to me is how can we take a normal athlete who's gonna come into the gym and say, okay, we need to take this individual and we need to put them into a regime where we teach them these movements, we teach them how to coordinate, and we teach them how to react quickly with plyometrics and with weightlifting movements. Now, finally, I wanna get into some female specific aspects here of plyometric training on vertical jump performance in female athletes, which is a big meta-analysis that we're gonna look at. When we're looking at the past two papers, we could see it's the combination really, in my opinion, that matters quite a bit. And even if you could add in the combination of maximal strength, so let's say you do a back squat or a front squat, and then you're doing, let's say, two box power snatch, which will increase your impulse because you're decreasing that range of motion. And then we bring in plyometric training. Really, this is where we're gonna see the big benefits. You know, if I use someone like Yaime Perez, who weighs 200 pounds as a female, and she has a 29 inch vertical leap, like there's probably something here to be said for plyometric snatches and big squats. Same thing, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, using someone like Haley Reichert, who at 50 kilos had a 27 inch vertical leap because she could jump very well. She was extraordinarily strong with her back squat, could back squat 156 kilos and was a world bronze medalist in the clean and jerk. Okay, so we've got to factor those things in with the females. Now, plyometric training has even been shown as an effective tool for preventing knee injuries. Okay, so let's just keep rolling with this. The aim of this specific review and meta-analysis was to determine plyometric training on vertical jump with amateurs, collegiates, and elite females. Okay, so they end up looking at six different electronic databases, okay? They have a total of 16 different studies that they pull from. This is specifically to women. And I think as strength and conditioning coaches, most papers are gonna be done on dudes. Now we're seeing 16 studies with women, okay? So we can understand the dudes, we can understand the chicks here, and now we can make good decisions moving forward. So a total of 16 different studies and meta-analysis revealed that plyometric training had a most likely moderate effect on counter movements, jump height, Plyometric training interventions of less than 10 weeks in duration had a most likely small effect on counter movement height performance. 
Uh, in contrast, plyometric training durations greater than 10 weeks had a most likely large effect on counter movement jumps. I wanna bring something up here quickly. I think it's shown that women tend to be a little bit less fast twitch. Okay, so it takes longer for the adaptations to occur. And if we're using consistently those big lifts, the plyometrics and the high speed lifts like weightlifting derivatives, like a power snatch, we can get their body to recruit as effectively as possible. Okay, so it just takes more time, but we can throw more stimulus at them. The effect of plyometric training on concentric only squat jumps was likely small. Similar effects were observed on squat jump height after six weeks of plyometric training in amateur athletes, uh, respectively, respectfully. The effect of plyometric training on counter movement jumps with arm swing was likely large. Most likely extremely large plyometric training effects on drop jumps were observed following 12 weeks of plyometric training. So again, now as a strength and conditioning coach, you can provide a realistic time frame. like, hey, we gotta add a couple inches to your vert, it's gonna take about 12 weeks. That's a realistic timeline. Now, if it happens faster than that, great, but you can provide that timeline and then use that to help improve their consistency and their commitment to training. I think the big aspect here is then plyometric training is an effective form of training to improve that vertical jump performance in female athletes. And ideally what we see and what we want is that we want to have a system based off of these three papers that involves weight training. So you're using weightlifting derivatives like a snatch, like a clean, like a jerk, or some type of variation, two box, one box, hang, whatever it is that you're doing. You're then using some maximal strength movements like a front squat or a back squat. And then you're also using plyometric work. Okay, This is what we're doing inside of our strength training at Peak Strength. When we built out Peak strength. The whole purpose was to sit there and say, how can we get people stronger, more explosive, and to have a greater vertical jump so that they can transfer that development into their sport. That's what happens inside peak strength. You're going to have that leg day on day one where we're focusing on snatch or clean and then a back squat. Day two, upper body strength. Day three, plyometrics. That's on athlete day. Day four, impulse work. This is how we built the entire system so that we can take the normal athlete that's going to walk in our door and get them to that elite level because we can improve their rate of force development, their average velocity, their peak velocity to in turn lead to greater impulse and a better vertical jump. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS store, because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace. Peace.